In the general settings, you can set the parallax animation for any element. The parallax settings are used to animate an element depending on the scroll position of the document. To configure a parallax animation, set the animation to parallax and click on Added Settings. Here you can create a parallax effect by animating one of the following properties. Use the range slider to set a value in a default unit. For example, let's animate the horizontal position of the element in pixels. In this case, the image is initially centered when entering the viewport and moves its position 430 pixels to the right until it leaves the viewport. You can also set a specific value or use a different unit by using the input field to the right. Animating the vertical position visually changes the scroll speed. So let's take a look at another example. Here I have three different images with a parallax effect. For the image to the left, the vertical position is set to minus 400 pixels so that the image moves faster when scrolling. The image in the center does not have a parallax effect and finally, the image on the right has the vertical position set to plus 400 pixels, so it moves slower on scrolling. Let's go back to our initial example. Next, you can animate the scaling vector. For example, 2 is 200% scale. The highlight here is that you can even use pixel, percent or viewport units for the scale property. This means you no longer need to know the size of the image to scale it to a specific value. For example, let's scale the image to the full width of the viewport. You can animate the rotation clockwise in degrees. For example, let's rotate the image 45 degrees. When you scale or rotate an element, you can also define the origin of the element's transformation. For example, right now it is set to center-center, so the element is rotated from the center. But if you set it to top-left, the element will be rotated from the top-left corner. The last property that you can animate here is Opacity. The opacity is animated in numbers. For example, 0 is fully transparent. Now the element completely fades out on scrolling. Translate and Scale properties additionally have optional units like Percent, Viewport Width and Viewport Height. So let's again animate the horizontal position to minus 30% from viewport width. In this case, the image starts in its original position in the center and moves 30% of the viewport width to the left. You can also add multiple stops to define the start, intermediate and end values along the animation sequence for each property. Here you can use the add and delete icons which appear on hover on the right to add or delete animation stops. If you set only one animation stop, the element will animate from its initial value to the defined stop value. If you set two animation stops, the element will be animated from the first stop value to the second stop value. In this case, the element will start 30% of the viewport width on the left and move to its original position in the center. Setting multiple stops adds intermediate stops along the animation sequence. In our case, the element will be animated from its original position to the left and back to its original position. By default, the animation is equally distributed between the animation stops. Alternatively, you can specify percentage to position the stops along the animation sequence. The position value is set in percent without the percent unit.
Now the animation starts in its original position in the center, moves to the left till it's at 40% of the animation, quickly moves to the right till it's at 60% and finally moves back to its initial position. You can also use the easing option to adjust the speed of the animation over time. Zero transitions at an even speed. A negative value starts off quickly, slowing down until complete. While a positive value starts off slowly, increasing the speed until complete. Next, we have the target option. By default, the animation starts and stops depending on the position of the element in the viewport. Alternatively, you can use the position of a parent container, like a column. For this option, let's take a look at a different example. Here, I have a column in a primary color. Now, if the target is element, the animation starts when the top border of the element enters the viewport and it ends when its bottom border leaves the viewport. If you set it to column, the animation will start when the column enters the viewport. As you can see, the image is no longer perfectly centered when it enters the viewport, since the animation has already started. The animation will also end when the column's bottom border leaves the viewport. This option is frequently used with the start and end offsets. As we just saw, the animation starts when the targeted element enters the viewport and ends when it leaves the viewport. Optionally, you can set a start and end offset. For example, let's set it to 200 pixels. The animation will be offset by 200 pixels after the element reaches the viewport. The same can be done for the end offset. Now, the animation will also end 200 pixels before the element leaves the viewport. Values can also be set in other dimension units, like percent or viewport height. The percent unit relates to the height of the targeted element. In this example, the animation will start when 100% of the element's height enters the viewport and ends when the top border of the element reaches the viewport. For comparison, let's set the target to column again. Now the animation will start when 100% of the column's height enters the viewport and it will end when the column's top border reaches the viewport. Both options allow basic mathematic operands plus and minus. For example, you can start an animation when the element is perfectly positioned in the middle of the viewport. Just set the start offset to 50VH plus 50%. This moves the element's top border to the middle of the viewport and adds half of the element's height, so it's perfectly positioned in the middle. And the same can be done for the end offset. Here we move the element's bottom border to the middle of the viewport, and then add half of the element's height, so the animation ends when the element is in the middle of the viewport. Next, there is a Z-index option, to set a higher stacking order when the elements overlap each other. The element with a higher stacking order will appear on top. Finally, you can also use the breakpoint option to display the parallax effect only on this device with Enlarger. For example, if you set it to medium, the parallax effect will only be shown on tablets in the landscape mode Enlarger. Mind that it's useful to disable the parallax animation on small viewports.